Hi, this is Tom from ZeroDefinals.com. I wanted to make a video about endometriosis, and this is really aimed at medical students and doctors, but it could be useful for anybody who has an interest or wants to know more about endometriosis. Endometriosis is a condition where there's endometrial tissue outside of the uterus, usually somewhere else in the pelvis. And when you have a lump of endometrial tissue outside the uterus, we can call it an endometrioma. When you have endometriomas in the ovaries, sometimes we can call them chocolate cysts. So before we go any further, I just want to go through some basic anatomy from the pelvis. So here's a front-on view of what you might see in the pelvis. And you'd have the uterus, which is this structure in the middle where babies grow. The lining of the uterus is called the endometrium, and it's this red area in the middle. And this is what breaks down and gets released and bleeds during menstruation or during women's periods. Attached to the uterus, you've got the cervix and the entrance to the vagina. And then you have the fallopian tubes and the ovaries, which produce the eggs. And the eggs move down the fallopian tube to the uterus, where fertilization takes place and you get a pregnancy. Now, look at this other diagram, which is the side on view of the pelvis. You can see the uterus and the vagina, and then up here you can see one of the ovaries and the fallopian tubes, and you can see how they relate to other structures such as the bladder and the rectum back here. This little space between the uterus and the rectum is called the pouch of Douglas. And it's worth knowing about that because that's quite a common place for endometrial tissue to settle. So we don't really know what causes endometriosis and there's no real cause that's been proven, but there's several theories. And one of the key theories is that during menstruation, as the endometrial lining starts to break down and Usually it would come out through the cervix and into the vagina like this. In some women, it might actually flow backwards through the fallopian tubes and out into the pelvis. And this we call retrograde menstruation. After the endometrial tissue has passed out of the fallopian tubes into the pelvis, it then seeds itself and you can get little pockets of endometrial tissue. Like I said before, we call it endometriomas. There are several other theories, like I said. One could be that it's spread through the lymphatic system in a similar way to how cancers metastasize. Or it could be that cells elsewhere somehow change in a process called metaplasia from their normal cell type to endometrial cells. There also seems to be a bit of a genetic component to developing endometriosis, but there's no particular endometriosis gene that's been found but we do find that it does have a tendency to run in families. So once you get these cells that settle outside the uterus, they continue to respond to hormones in the same way as the endometrium in the uterus. So that means throughout the menstrual cycle, they develop and thicken, and then when it comes to menstruation, they also start to shed, and this bleeding elsewhere in the body causes irritation and inflammation of the tissues around the endometrial tissue. And this causes what we call a cyclical because it responds to the menstrual cycle. It causes a cyclical, dull, heavy or burning type of a pain that occurs around the same time or slightly before menstruation. And where you have deposits of endometriosis in the bladder or the bowel, this can lead to abnormal bleeding in these areas. So you could find that people with endometriosis in these areas have some blood in their urine or their stools during the time of menstruation. The other problem that occurs with endometriosis is that this localized bleeding and inflammation can lead to something called adhesions. So this is where the inflammation from the localized bleeding and the endometriosis causes damage to the local tissues and as they heal they develop scar tissue that binds them together. You end up with different organs attaching themselves to each other. For example the ovaries could be attached to the lining of the pelvis called the peritoneum or something like the uterus could be attached to the bowel. You can also get adhesions after having major surgery and people with endometriosis quite often end up having recurrent surgeries and this can contribute to the adhesions developing. And this leads to a chronic 
non-cyclical, so it's not related to the menstrual cycle, abdominal and pelvic pain that can be sort of sharp or stabbing or pulling in nature, and it can make the patient feel quite sick or nauseated when it's happening. The other issue other than a cyclical pain or this chronic non-cyclical pain related to adhesions is that some women with endometriosis can struggle to become pregnant. However, it's important to remember that having endometriosis doesn't necessarily lead to reduced fertility. We're not really sure why some women with endometriosis struggle to get pregnant, but it could be due to adhesions around the ovaries and the fallopian tubes that either block the ovary from releasing the eggs or hold the tubes in abnormal positions which prevent the egg from sort of moving along smoothly and reaching the uterus. Endometriomas in the ovaries could also cause local inflammation and damage the eggs or prevent effective ovulation. But often we can't find a clear reason for why the person with endometriosis is struggling with fertility. Just a side note on how we would treat reduced fertility in endometriosis. The number one method would be using surgery and the intention of the surgery is basically to correct any of these possible causes of the infertility. So number one we would clear any adhesions that might be surrounding the ovary or blocking any eggs from being released. Secondly remove any cysts that might contain endometriosis on the ovaries so that we reduce the risk of inflammation in the area, anovulation and damage to the eggs. And the final thing would be to try and normalise as much as possible the structure and the position of the pelvis so that we optimise the chances of achieving a normal pregnancy. So how do we diagnose endometriosis if we have somebody who's having pains that we think or they're cyclical, they're having particularly heavy periods and we wonder whether they could have a diagnosis of endometriosis? Well first a thorough examination might reveal any other causes of this type of pain. Speculum examination might reveal some deposits of endometriosis in the vagina. Bimanual examination could reveal a fixed uterus, meaning that you can't easily move it with the tips of your fingers. And the cervix could be fixed in place and it could be very tender deep inside the vagina or you can also have a lot of adnexal tenderness. You can use a pelvic ultrasound which would reveal any large endometriomas or chocolate cysts in the ovaries but often pelvic ultrasounds are unhelpful in that they're normal in people who have significant endometriosis. The gold standard way to diagnose endometriosis is using laparoscopic surgery. So using keyhole surgery to have a look inside the abdomen and try to spot any areas where endometrial tissue is placed outside of the uterus. And the useful thing about doing this surgery is that if you find endometrial tissue, it's possible to actually put some treatments in place, such as cauterizing that tissue or actually excising it out. Just a quick word on the staging system for endometriosis. Stage 1 is where you only have very small superficial lesions of endometrial tissue outside the uterus. Stage 2 is where you would have deeper lesions, which include inside the pouch of Douglas. Stage 3 is where you have deep lesions, which would be in the pouch of Douglas, but also with lesions on the ovary itself. And then stage 4 would be deep and large lesions affecting the pouch of Douglas, the ovaries, and also extensive adhesions throughout the pelvis. Stage 4 is really the most extensive condition, most severe endometriosis. So finally let's move on and have a quick look at the management options that we have. The main thing is to offer some analgesia for the person's chronic or cyclical pelvic pain. The first line really for treating endometriosis is to give hormonal medications that stop ovulation and reduce the amount of endometrial thickening. By stopping ovulation, you reduce the amount of estrogen and progesterone hormones that are thickening up the endometrium and then shedding during menstruation. So the way we can achieve this is using the combined oral contraceptive pill or using progesterone such as medroxyprogesterone acetate in the depot injection or by using the Mirena coil. All of these methods work to try to prevent ovulation 
and also to reduce the amount of endometrial thickening that happens. These hormonal methods will help with the cyclical pain, but they may not help with pain relating to the adhesions. The other thing that we find is that this cyclical pain tends to improve after menopause. So another option is to induce a medical menopause, and this can be done with something called GnRH analogs, such as guzarelin, which is commonly known as Zolidex injections. What they do is they shut down the ovaries temporarily, so they completely stop the whole menstrual cycle, and this can really make an improvement for the cyclical menstrual pain. The problem with inducing the menopause early is it does come with its own side effects, such as the hot flushes, night sweats, and thinning of the bones, similar to the symptoms that a menopausal woman would experience. The next option when the medical management of endometriosis has failed is surgery. And quite often women with endometriosis end up having several surgical procedures to try and treat the condition. Laparoscopic surgery or keyhole surgery can be used to find the endometrial tissue and then cut it out or cauterize it so that it stops producing that localized inflammation and pain. We can also use surgery to treat the chronic pelvic pain of women who've developed adhesions where we go in and cut the adhesions out and separate everything and try and return the anatomy as far as we can to normal and that quite often helps the chronic pelvic pain relating to the adhesions. And really the final step that can be used to try and treat women who are having really severe endometriosis that's not responding to any other treatments would be to do a hysterectomy and what we call a bilateral salpingophorectomy, where we take out the ovaries and tubes as well. While we're doing this, we try and take out as much of the endometriosis as we can find at the same time, and removing the ovaries and removing the endometrial tissue itself will induce the menopause and should help to improve the symptoms. The problem is, this isn't a guaranteed method of curing the endometriosis, and there's no real effective cure for the condition. So it's a bit of a gamble whether this will work or not, and it's quite a drastic thing to have happen, especially to a younger woman. So thanks for watching, I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, don't forget there's plenty of other resources on the Zero to Finals website, including loads and loads of notes on various different topics that you might cover in medical school, with specially made illustrations. There's also a whole test section where you can find loads of questions to test your knowledge and see where you're up to, in preparation for your exams. There's also a blog where I share a lot of my ideas about a career in medicine and tips on how to have success as a doctor. And if you want to help me out on YouTube, you can always leave me a thumbs up, give me a comment or even subscribe to the channel so that you can find out when the next videos are coming out. So I'll see you again soon.